Okay, it's time for another movie review, and in tune with last week's uncensored review of Norbit, I'm going to be doing another uncensored movie review of a really bad movie that I reviewed back in 2013. So without further ado, here we go. First, it's time to take a little trip to the magical world of the 80s. The 80s were the best decade for movies, best decade for TV, and of course the best decade for music. I am a huge 80s buff. Duh. 80s for the win. Specifically, we're going back to the year 1987. From my understanding, 1987 was probably not a good year for movies. Not that I'm saying that all movies that came out in 1987 were bad. There were good movies that came out in 1987, such as Lethal Weapon, The Untouchables, Predator, Robocop, Dirty Dancing, I could go on. But most of the movies that came out that year were bad. I mean, for every Robocop, there's a Superman 4. For every Lethal Weapon, there's a He-Man. For every Dirty Dancing, there's a Jaws the Revenge. And there's the movie we're reviewing today. The 80s had its fair share of crappy movies. But in contrast to movies that come out in today's world, even the 80s crap was better than most of today's movies. But this particular movie goes beyond crap. This movie is more like on the borderline of shit. This movie is so bad that every respectable critic that reviewed this movie from Siskel and Ebert all the way up to the nostalgia critic have said unanimously that this movie sucks. That accompanied by the fact that this movie has a 0% approval rating on Rotten Tomatoes and many people have called this movie the worst movie ever made and it is also so bad that Doug Walker, the man behind the nostalgia critic, devoted the last 15 minutes of his top 11 worst movies he's ever had to review video ranting about this movie. And this was his top pick for the worst movie ever. So what is this movie? The Garbage Pail Kids movie. But before we begin, let's talk a little bit about the director of this movie. A chap by the name of Rod Amato, who started out during the days of radio before branching out into movies and television, and whose career spanned almost four decades prior to this movie. His name has been attached to many successful TV shows and movies over the years, including being a supervising producer and directing several episodes, including the pilot episode of a TV show that was a big staple of my childhood, as well as the childhood of a lot of people in my generation, The Dukes of Hazard. So with that body of work, why would a guy like Rod Amato go from The Dukes of Hazard to this piece of shit? Let's find out. The plot what little there is anyway, focuses on a kid named Dodger, played by 80s sitcom star Mackenzie Aston, who's bullied by a group of 20-somethings, in which case they should be in jail for picking on a kid. In one of his run-ins with the bullies, a garbage can is accidentally opened, and next thing you know, those little mean-spirited, disgusting demon hell spawns, played by actors in really badly made animatronic suits, are released to cause mayhem in a variety of disgusting ways. I believe details are unnecessary. But I can tell you that in terms of the gross-out humor, they really push the envelope here, especially for a PG-rated movie. Dodger soon enlists the kids to help make clothes because, surprise, surprise, he's trying to impress a girl who obviously looks like she's in her 20s and is the stereotypical hot chick that every guys want but only the bad boys get. She's obviously involved with the bullies. In fact, she's in love with the head bully. But she appears to be interested in Dodger, if only to use him to get what she wants, which is to be a big fashion designer, even if it means being a shallow bitch in order to accomplish her goals. Before I go any further, I was in such a rush to get this review over with as quickly as possible that I forgot the backstory of the Garbage Pill Kids themselves. For those of you who don't know or care for that matter, the Garbage Pill Kids are basically a series of bubblegum baseball cards designed to parody the Cabbage Patch Kids dolls that were wildly popular at the time this movie came out. And they're still popular. Each card has a kid with a bizarre name like Messy Tessie, Valerie Vomit, and Alligator, to name a few, along with their respective gross superpowers, such as pissing their pants every five minutes, like what is in the movie. Once is enough, but to do it every five minutes is pushing it. In fact, I'm going to throw another name into the mix. Fucking Shitbag, which is what this movie is. And somewhere some big shot in Hollywood thought that they could do a movie around this popular cartoon series. I would have to say it's a very bad idea. And it's also a bad idea that it's about to repeat itself. There have been plans over the years to remake this movie using CGI that's supposed to be out sometime soon. Be afraid, viewers. Be very afraid. 
As far as the overall story goes, it seems like the story was put together by someone who had been dropped on their head repeatedly as a child. That's how bad it is. Like Twilight, this movie is designed to murder the brain cells of anyone who watches this movie. In fact, I'm pretty much convinced that this movie is the harbinger of the Twilight Saga, which has been named the worst movie of all time. All five of them. Now while I agree with that sentiment, unfortunately in my book that dubious honor still goes to Norbit. Is this movie for kids? Contrary to the fact that this movie carries a PG rating and is aimed at kids, I would have to say no fucking way. No kid should see this movie. It's too dark, too mean-spirited, gross, beyond what is acceptable, violent, and above all else, it's fucking stupid, stupid, stupid. And the concept of a prison known as the state home for the ugly? Really? While I give that idea points for originality, I don't agree with the fact that the writers made Abraham Lincoln, Santa Claus, and Gandhi inmates. Why don't we trade them for Raspisha from Norbit, the cast of Honey Boo Boo, Edward Cullen, the Kartrashians, Nicki Minaj, and Hillary Clinton. At least putting the kids in there is a step in the right direction. In fact, I might just change the name of the institution to the State Home for Shitty Entertainment. That would be more fucking respectful. Do I even fucking need to continue this review any further? Summing this up, the acting sucks, the effects suck, the story sucks, the directing sucks. No fucking redeemable value at all. Now I have searched for a reason why I should not hate this movie. And I have searched for a reason to prove all the critics wrong. And you know what? All the critics are right! This movie sucks! Anyone associated with this movie deserves whatever bad karma they get. Now, I don't have a copy of the movie on hand to destroy, which means it's time to whip out my handy dandy. This movie sucks nuclear bomb detonator app. However, the kids will not be going to the state home of the ugly. Instead, they're off to bad movie hell. And there you go. Another bad movie nuked out of existence, and hopefully that remake of Garbage Pail Kids won't come to fruition. Man, my This Movie Sucks Nuclear Bomb Detonator app needs a break. Hopefully the next review will be of a good movie. <laughs>